Welcome back, everybody. I realize it's been uh, quite some time since I've done a tutorial, but uh, figured, hey, why not get back into it after <laughs> I think it's been about two and a half years. So I figured I'd do an updated uh, OpenCV installation tutorial. So I set up a GitHub page for that. So if we uh, go to Google and type GitHub, and then microcontrollers and more, that's the name of my GitHub page. And then there we go, it should pop right up. And then we're going to go to microcontrollers and more, and repositories, and OpenCV 2.4.11, Windows Installation Guide. And I'd recommend go ahead and bookmark this. And uh, what I did was, um, I'm going to divide this into four parts. The first part we're going to do um, OpenCV um, and OpenCV 2.4.11 with uh, C++. Um, pre-compiled binaries in Visual Studio. That'll be real quick and easy to set up. Uh, then the second video we're going to do uh, Python 2. And then the third video we'll do uh, MGUCV. Um, so that's a, uh, for those not familiar, MGUCV is a essentially a huge wrapper library for OpenCV so that you can call OpenCV functions from within uh, the .NET environment. In other words, Visual Basic, .NET, and C Sharp. And then in the fourth video, uh, we'll get into a few more steps, a little bit more in depth. We're going to compile OpenCV from source. And then we're going to um, configure the compile from source with Visual Studio 2013. And uh, then we're going to write some programs in the Qt environment. Uh, first, we'll write a command line based program, just the same as we're doing in um, Visual Studio with native C++ up to that point here in part one and the beginning of part four. And then um, we'll get into some graphical front end uh, Qt programs as well in part four after that. So that's a lot to do. So let's dive into it here. So uh, I set up for each of these here these installation cheat sheets. So uh, kind of got to wait a minute here. Okay, there we go. And so once this comes up, as you see, uh, GitHub doesn't necessarily render PDFs always correctly. I've tried this on different versions of Internet Explorer and with Chrome. Sometimes some configurations it works, some it doesn't. It doesn't look that great here. Anyway, I don't recommend looking at it here anyway. Choose uh, Raw and then Open. And then I'll just bring this over from my other screen here. So here's what I'm going to be working from from the tutorial here. Is I'm basically just going to read the instructions and shoot down here. And then um, as far as code, uh, let's start with candy still .c++. So again, for each of these programs, uh, and I got three programs in each of the environments I described earlier. So the first one is um, a C++ regular old command line based version. And so that's these ones here that end in .cpp. And then um, each of the three programs I'm doing in each of these languages, I should add. And then uh, so in the second tutorial, we'll get to the Python version of uh, each program. And then in the third tutorial, we'll get to the Visual Basic and uh, C sharp versions and then in the fourth tutorial we'll get to the Qt versions as well as redo the plain old C++ version once we've done the native compile. And uh, this candy still program here, so these are um, just bringing up an image. Uh, you can use any image you like or you can use this one that I've supplied here if you'd like to have my results. Uh, your results look the same as what I'll be showing in the video. It's just plain Jane license plate there, nothing fancy. I just found this randomly on the internet. It's not any relative of mine or anything significant. And so Candy still is just going to pop that image up and then take the Candy Edge image of it. That's just to prove that OpenCV is working for you. And then Candy Webcam is just going to do the same thing um, with a webcam feed. Uh, so again, that's just to prove that uh, OpenCV is uh, working with you as far as with webcam use. And then uh, the last of the three programs that we're going to do is this Red Ball Tracker one, which tracks a Red Ball. Uh, you can buy a Red Ball, you know, just stop at Toys R Us or something on the way home. Uh, someday you can buy one for 50 cents. Um, and then you can have it used for this video, and that's basic object tracking is what that's illustrating. So um, without further ado, let's get right into the first one. So we'll go to candystill.cpp, and then you can read the code here. It has nice syntax highlighting because it's GitHub, of course, but for copying and pasting, much better to go to raw, and there's the code. So this uh, cheat sheet one, and then this raw code here is what I'm going to be working from, and I'm basically just going to go down the cheat sheet. Uh, for the rest of the tutorial, and uh, hopefully this works out well for everybody. So let's get started. So, um, and again, just starting here from step one, download and install Visual Studio 2013 Community Edition. If you're watching this video on how to do computer vision, I'm sure everybody knows how to do that. You can just choose all the default options. Uh, download OpenCV 2.4.11, and then make a folder C OpenCV 2.4.11, and extract OpenCV 2.4.11 to there. Um, if you're totally new to OpenCV, um, once you download it, 
I'll just show you my downloads folder here quickly. Where is it? Let's see, OpenCV 2.4.11. It's an executable, and here I'll show you where to get it really quickly. Uh, it's pretty straightforward, but just in case anybody's wondering, OpenCV, and then we go to here, and then uh, pretty much just go to downloads here, and they are up to version 3. Um, probably maybe towards the end of this year, I'm going to redo this tutorial series with, um, I'm planning on doing it with Windows 10 and OpenCV 3. Um, once Windows 10 is released and OpenCV 3 is past release candidate stage, which as you see it still is at currently. Um, but for the moment, I recommend sticking with the tried and true, so we'll stick with OpenCV 2.4.11. This is probably going to be the last release in the OpenCV line. And uh, the OpenCV, really 2.4. anything has been consistent going back quite some time now. Uh, the OpenCV organization has done a really good job with that. Uh, it's very stable at this point in the two line, so let's let's stick with the tried and true. So you would choose this here, OpenCV for Windows. That's going to take you to the source uh, SourceForge page. And then that's gonna there you're gonna download this here OpenCV 2.4.11 EXE. So if you double click on that and then you choose Run, uh, it asks you where to extract it. So uh, I'm not gonna do this, but um, you would extract to that location. Okay, yeah. So you would simply copy and paste that in there and then choose Extract again. I'm not gonna do it because uh, it's already done, but you get the idea. Uh, so then we're on to step four here add the bin directory to the operating system path so we're going to go ahead and copy this make sure not to get a trailing space there there we go no trailing space copy and then go to start control panel and where's system there we go system advanced system settings environment variables and then scroll down to path and then edit and then either press the right arrow key uh, continuously or the end key until you get to the far right of your path variable and then add a semicolon and then press Control v to paste in what we just copied a second ago. So uh, this was the end of the previous entry here. Then we have the semicolon to delimit. Then we have what we just copied. C OpenCV2411, OpenCV uh, build, x86, VC12, and bin. So we're going to choose OK. OK again. OK. And we're now going to close out of everything. And then I'm going to stop the recording and then reboot. Okay, so our reboot's complete and we just did steps 4 A and B, so continuing on with step 5 uh, from my microcontrollers and more GitHub page, uh, decide which example you'd like to use. Uh, CandyStill.cpp takes the candy edges of a still image. Uh, CandyWebcam.cpp takes the candy edges of a webcam feed. And Redball Tracker tracks a red ball. Uh, so just to start out with the simplest one, let's start with CandyStill.cpp. So we'll move on to step six here, start Visual Studio. I'm going to move the cheat sheet off the window, and we can close that and that, and then go to File, New, Project. And I'm going to copy and paste out of the cheat sheet as much as possible here to save time and make the presentation consistent. So Windows 32 Console Application and Candy Still 1, choose your preferred location, uncheck those, choose OK, Next, uncheck those, check that, and choose Console Application and Finish. And then when it comes up, right click over here and choose Add New Item. And we'll make the name of the source the same as the project, so candystill1.cpp. And make sure you choose C++ file and then Add. And then we'll go back to the, my microcontrollers and more GitHub page. And Windows uh, OpenCV 2.4.11 installation guide. So then we're going to go to candystill.cpp and raw, control A, control C and paste that in there and let's make that just a bit smaller uh, everything's red underlined right now because uh, we haven't yet told Visual Studio where to find OpenCV we're going to take care of that in a minute but first let's put an image uh, in the correct directory so right now the directory we're working in is let's see here Visual Studio 2013 Pro CPP Canny Still 1 so we need to download the image into there try and set this up so you all can see that same time there we go that, that'll work so if we go to let's see back a couple here uh, there and then we go down to image.jpg you can use anything named image.jpg but you know if you'd like to see the same results as in the video maybe this would be good to use the same one so uh, we'll save to 2013 progs cpp candy still one save to there and there we just saw that appeared so now we have the image in the correct directory and now I'm going to move all this stuff out of the way and then continuing on with the cheat sheet now we have to let um, 
Visual Studio know where our OpenCV install is. So let's see, that was step eight was uh, downloading the image. So now on to step nine, so project uh, properties, configuration properties, expand that, and Visual C++ directories, and then include directories, and choose edit and new. And again, I'm just copying this right out of the cheat sheet. Uh, when you're copying, you want to make sure you don't get any leading or trailing spaces. Always something to be cautious of. And you can just leave these things down here how they are. That's fine. And library directories, edit. And now we're going to copy and paste in the library directory. Careful not to get any leading or trailing spaces when we copy and paste. There we go. And then go down to linker and input. And additional dependencies. And I'll do a quick explanation on this here to go along with what's in the cheat sheet. So if you go to, uh, let's see here, by the way, I've followed step 11 to enable um, viewing file extensions if you haven't already. I'm going to presume if you're watching this video, you probably already have done that or know how to do that. So then in Windows Explorer, we're going to navigate to this directory. And there we go. And what we're going to find in the library directory is each of these library files. There's these CMIC uh, files at the bottom here, but those don't especially pertain to what we're doing at the moment. So um, for each uh, library, there's two versions of it. There's the release version that does not have a D before the dot lib, and then there's the the bug version that has the D just before the dot lib. Um, just to keep things as straightforward and consistent as possible, uh, Visual Studio defaults to the debug build. Uh, build so we'll just leave it at that so we need to get the name of this file this file this file and this file and so on all the way down so uh, verify that those names match these ones in the cheat sheet here which if you, you follow the installation instructions so far they should and then we'll go ahead and to save time copy and paste those in there and you can leave all this how it is then choose uh, ok then apply then ok and now all the red lines should disappear and then at the top here we want to make sure that we have solution configuration set to debug and solution platform set to win32 and then we can go ahead and start the program and there we go we're all set so here's our original image and there's our candy edge image just uh, click on either image and then press any key to make it disappear and that ends the program and we'll just take a quick shoot through the code here um, I try to choose my variable names so they're pretty clear and kind of make my code as self-documenting as possible and put in comments uh, where it's helpful. So it should be pretty straightforward to read through this, but we'll just take a quick breeze through it. Uh, so here's your pretty much your three standard includes you're going to have in most of your OpenCV programs. Then we have IO stream so that we can uh, print a standard out when uh, necessary. So then we declare four images at the beginning here, original, grayscale, blurred, and canny. Uh, you can do some of your processing steps in place, but for somebody that's new to OpenCV, I figured maybe it'd be helpful to have the four images separate to illustrate the steps a little bit better. Uh, so then we read in uh, the still image here, image.jpg. Uh, into mat original and in case mat original is empty so if this read was not successful then we print an error message to standard out and then return that's going to end the program uh, then we convert color from uh, the original color image to grayscale with this here uh, cvbgr to gray and then we gaussian blur the image then we get the candy edges and then we declare our windows and then we show our windows and then cv wait key holds the windows open until uh, the user presses a key and then return exits the program so we're all set with that one. That worked out pretty well. So let's go back to here. You probably recognize this by now. And let's do the next one. We don't even need to make a new project. We can just go right to Candy Webcam and RAW. Control A, Control C, and go in here. Control A, Control V, and run it. And there we go. And uh, <laughs> it's it's June in Detroit here, and I'm wearing my winter hat in my apartment. Uh, it's, been a pretty cold winter unfortunately but it is what it is now uh, anyhow let's take a quick shoot down this uh, code here and um, it's pretty similar to the previous one just of course the only difference is we're using a webcam so that's the same and here's the syntax for the line to declare the webcam capture object and then uh, if that was not successful that, that is kept webcam dot is opened if that's false then we print an error saying that um, we weren't able to access the webcam and then jump back out of the program. Supposing that uh, the webcam was successfully accessed, we're going to declare our same four variables here, and then we have this character variable to check for the escape key being pressed. That's ASCII 27, of course. So uh, while the escape key has not yet been pressed and uh, cab webcam is still open, we're going to call this function here webcam.read. 
and then uh, mat original is going to be uh, changed passed by reference and what's returned from this function of course uh, this this is where we get the image what's returned from the function is a boolean variable indicating if the read was successful or not so uh, if that read was not successful or if for any other reason mat original is empty at this point then we show an error message to the command line and break uh, supposing it um, the image was read successfully at this point it's the same as the previous program convert color from uh, original to grayscale, blur, get the candy ed edges, show the windows, uh, declare the windows rather, and then show them. And then we update our character for escape key. We call CV wait key uh, one. That's going to wait for, uh, this is a delay here in milliseconds, so one thousandth of a second. So essentially we just kick control back to the operating system for just long enough for it to get a key press without really interrupting the stream of uh, frames from webcam significantly and then that's the end of the while we jump back up here and then as long as escape isn't pressed we keep doing that and as long as we're continuing to get images successfully and once we get past the while then the program ends and that's it so for our last program uh, let's let's see go back here and then we're gonna choose red ball tracker we'll get to red ball tracker .qt in the last tutorial about part four but for now we'll stick to redballtracker.cpp raw and control a control c and then control a control v and go ahead and run it and there we are and there's object tracking and we print the x and y coordinates as well let me see if i can get that all on the screen at once there we go so as you can see there's a red circle around the outside of the ball and then a green dot in the center and and then the process image of course is on the right and then we're printing the x and y location and the ball radius uh, to the command prompt there so let's just take a quick shoot through the code on this one as well uh, so this is very similar to of course the previous program so here's our standard three includes then we get the webcam connection just the same as before error check that here we only have two images original and processed here we'll do more of the uh, processing in place and then we have this uh, variable here which is a vector of type vec3f and that's going to be the circles just in case there's more than one in the image we're declaring a vector of them then check character for escape key is the same as the previous program and this line here is the same as the previous program and then we're going to check and make sure that we got the frame. Supposing that we did, I found just experimentally it works best to Gaussian blur, then filter on color. This function here in range is what filters on color. This is the minimum. And remember, OpenCV uses uh, BGR, not RGB. So in other words, we're looking for uh, 0 blue, 0 green, 175 red at a minimum, and then at a maximum 100 blue, 100 green, and 256 red. So in other words, something with very little blue or green and a lot of red in it and that's in range and then we blur again and again just experimentally I found if I blurred both before and after in range it, it got better results uh, then we perform a closing operation that is a dilate and an erode and uh, we call this closing because it uh, closes or fills in uh, foreground gaps in the image and then this called the hue circles here will get the um, circles out of the processed image and then we have this for loop here for each uh, effectively for each circle in that vector of circles uh, this first part here uh, prints out the x uh, and y location and radius to the command prompt as you saw and then here's the code uh, called the circle here to draw the green circle at the uh, center of the detected object and then this final call to circle here draws the red circle around the outside and then so and four so we're going to do that for each circle in the image and then uh, we declare our windows show our windows and update our check for escape key variable and then keep looping in the while and once we get past the while the program ends and that's it so uh, that pretty much completes this first tutorial that was successful I hope uh, everybody felt that was beneficial to them and uh, I'm probably going to stop recording right now and jump right into the second tutorial which is going to be covering OpenCV and Python uh, see you there